Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Today we're going to cover latching push button switches and how to interface them to the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. We'll be taking a look at a few physical examples of them. We'll talk about their applications. We'll review a data sheet to look at the important attributes of these devices. We'll see how to wire it up via a fritzing wiring diagram, and then finally we'll be looking at MicroPython code to handle them. Latching switches have been around for quite a while now. The earliest reference I can find regarding patent or invention goes back to 1965. The information isn't real clear, but we'll use that as a rough baseline for how long they've been around. Uh, there's many forms and styles of them, uh, and today there are still quite a few in use. Uh, we'll take a quick look at them here on the workbench first. Now the one thing that you'll notice about a latching switch, it looks just like a push button switch in most cases. However, its behavior is different in that when I push it, it stays in. I push it again and it pops out. That Thus the meaning it's latching. When I press it in, it latched in. Then it latches out. So. That is a difference between a, a momentary button where you just push it and it stays contacted only while you're holding it in. In this case, it holds itself in or it holds itself in closed position. Now, as you can imagine, they come in a variety of sizes. Uh, again, typical applications for this type of uh, button would be in uh, power switching. And they do come in different configurations. This one would have had uh, or has solder on uh, lugs on the bottom, panel mount. Here's another one uh, that is also panel mount. Its right angle configuration would be for shallow cabinets. Operation is the same. Push it in, stays in, push it, and it pops out. And it's got flying leads so that you can connect it up easily. This one's more of a heavy duty unit, and I believe it was uh, for either automotive or marine use when I purchased it. This one here is a circuit board mount type. Uh, this was probably from a piece of computer electronics, maybe even a PC board. Uh, this would have been the type of switch on the low voltage side to turn the power on and off for PCs. Operation is exactly the same. Push it, pops out, push it again and it stays in. This one's a little more clunky looking than uh, more modern counterparts where everything seems to be enclosed, including the spring. Uh, but nonetheless, it's still a latching push-button switch. Another one uh, that is common today that we see in many applications is uh, the emergency stop button. Now, we'll discuss this in a different video because of uh, how we want it to behave. We need this switch to behave differently than these types that we're using here. But its behavior is the same. You push it, it stays closed. To release it, you rotate it and it pops out. Some of them just pull out. Uh, but that is a form of latching push-button switch. As I alluded to, their applications uh, in the electronics world are often for power switching, where you push it, it turns the device on. When you want to turn the device off, you push the button and it turns off. Uh, that can be a nuisance for small electronic devices because often if you push the button, if the device is lightweight, it just kind of scoots along, requiring two hands to make it operate. Uh, but they can be used in a fashion very similar to a toggler or rocker or paddle switch wherein you can turn states or turn features on and off within your microcontroller uh, and you would handle that through software. So we'll take a look at how to use them in microcontrollers. Now let's take a look at a data sheet uh, for latching push button switches. Uh, this particular one is for a very different style of switch than what we're showing here on the on our workbench. Uh, but we're, we're always looking for the criticals. Uh, this particular switch uh, can handle 2 amps at 48 volts DC or 125 volts AC, well within what we would be doing uh, with a Pico. And uh, it has uh, 10,000 cycles. Uh, uh, electrical life at 10,000 cycles rated at full uh, current draw. 
Uh, so that would definitely fit in with what we need. Um, and then there's other specs here that may or may not be important for you. Another one I'd like to point out, uh, let me scroll down here. Uh, this particular switch, as you can see, there's many varieties of it. Uh, but somewhere here it's going to say uh, the switch can come in non-latching, meaning a regular momentary push button and a latching uh, push button type switch. So you sometimes have to dig around a little bit inside the data sheet to find the information. But uh, like all data sheets, especially for switches, uh, the, the critical elements are uh, of course, the, the physical characteristics, will it fit in the uh, situation that you need, size-wise? And uh, does it handle the ratings uh, for voltage and current? As, and again, as I say in all these videos, in our case, that's rarely ever a problem because our, our current and voltage is so low. Wiring up a latching push-button switch is really a very simple task. We'll take a look at the Fritzing diagram to explain that. Uh, as you'll see here, this is the Raspberry Pi Pico. I run a ground wire down to the ground rail. Not needed for function of this circuit, but it's always good practice to have a ground rail on a breadboard when you're prototyping like this. This particular pin here is our 3.3 volts out. I'm going to run a jumper over to our positive voltage rail. That comes over to here for one of the pins on the back of our uh, push-button switch. Uh, so we would bring 3.3 volts into here, and when the button is latched in the on position, voltage or current would continue through the blue wire and into GP number 15 on the Pi Pico. Wiring, very straightforward. Over here on the actual breadboard, you can see the, the red 3.3 volt line coming up to the positive rail to our yellow wire going into one of the inputs on the push button switch and when when latched on current comes out through the blue wire and into GP pin 15. Very very straightforward very simple to uh, wire up and I'm not using a physical pull down resistor or a physical pull up resistor we're going to use uh, the built in ones inside the Pico so that we maintain a true zero volts when the switch is turned off. The programming of the latching push button switch, uh, we're not worried about transition from off to on or on to off. We're strictly looking for state to make a determination if we want something to happen or not happen at some point in our program. So let's see how we do that. We're going to import the machine library, which gives us physical access to the physical pins of the machine, other physical hardware as well. Um, we're going to import the MicroPython version of the time library called uTime or MicroTime. And we're going to use that for the purpose of creating a pause or a delay in our main loop of 100 milliseconds. That just slows things down so we can see it and understand what's happening. We're going to utilize the onboard LED of the Raspberry Pi Pico, and that is on physical pin number 25. So to give us something to work with there, we're going to create an object called LED. How creative is that? And it's going to be on machine.pin 25, and we're going to set up that machine.pin as an output. We want it to be an actual output to control the LED. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is create an object for our switch. And again, I've got a very creative name there, latching push button switch. If you've got multiple switches, you could use an underscore one, underscore two, etc., or however you want to differentiate them. You can utilize multiple switches in any MicroPython program. Uh, but we're going to create this object from the machine.pin library. Uh, we're going to put it on GP number 15. We're going to create it as an input. And we're going to pull that value down or that pin down to zero volts when positive voltage is not applied to it. And that eliminates a lot of false reads and so forth. 
Uh, we're going to use a polling method to look at this switch, uh, primarily because it works perfectly within our, our main loop for our, our MicroPython program. Uh, we would uh, make a comparison here on this line. If latching push button switch value equals true, meaning it was turned on, and what we're doing is really in essence saying if input GP15 is high, then we'll turn the LED on. And then we will print the word on and that'll show up down here in the shell area. And then the other state that the switch could be in is else if or L if uh, latching push button switch dot value equals false, meaning it's off or GP15 is low, we'll print off and then turn the LED off that's on the Pico board. Now, of course, in these areas here or here is where you would be making a determination within your program how you want it to behave. You may want to do something uh, with your code if the switch is on. Otherwise, you may want to do something else if the switch is off or perhaps do nothing at all if the switch is off. But this is the area where you would put that code. Now let's see how this runs in the real world. We'll get it running here. We'll see that it's showing off here. Now over at the actual push button switch, I'm going to push it in to turn it on. You saw the LED come on. And over on the computer, we see it's scrolling the word on. I'll press the button to release it. goes to off. Back on our... LED or on the Pico, the LED is off. Truly that simple. So hopefully that'll get you started if you want to start using uh, latching push button switches or other types of latching switches. It's truly very simple to use, especially when applied as we're describing here, to cause uh, an action based on the state of that switch or to cause a different action based on the state being on or off. It's really that simple. That should wrap it up for our discussion on using the latching push button switches on the Raspberry Pi Pico using MicroPython. As with most of the videos in this series, we have files that you can download, which would include uh, the fr fritzing diagram and source code, uh, perhaps some other information uh, as needed. You can download that from our companion website, makingstuffwithchrisdayhut.com. Links are provided in the description below. I'd also like to mention that there's probably about 50 or 60 total videos planned for this series on the Raspberry Pi Pico and interfacing it using it uh, with a variety of devices. You can find more information about the full series on our companion website with links to each of the videos and a, a complete description. I'd like to express my thanks. I really do appreciate you spending time watching the video with me today. Uh, hopefully you found it informative or entertaining. Um, if so, I would hope that you'll subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It costs you nothing, so it's uh, certainly very good value. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button and uh, there's this notification bell somewhere in that same area that allows you to be notified whenever I publish a new video. So that can be kind of handy if you're following along, especially with this video series on the Raspberry Pi Pico. With that, I hope to see you in the next video.